Hey guys, it's The Amazing here. We are back again with another research and development episode. Today, as you can see, I have gone a little bit further with the Ben Riley Carousel Bracelet Web Shooter Project. So, now we have a uh, non-circular conveyor belt. Uh, we have attached a motor, and we have a clasp. Check it out. Perfect. Oops. <laughs> so obviously this clasp mechanism needs some perfecting, but uh, I went through a couple iterations already, and I think what I have is pretty all right. I'll show it to you from the side here. It's kind of interesting how that goes together. Just like that. Isn't that something? Yeah, all the STL files for this will be in my Patreon, so feel free to contribute there. And um, yeah, I went through a couple, uh, couple clasp iterations. First of all, I thought I could basically just kind of have like a <laughs> hooking thing like that but that was a dumb idea because there was some give this way, so that was never gonna work. Then I kind of migrated to something like this where I have a clip version like that, and you can see that fits in there. However, that only works if there's pressure here, kind of sandwiching these pieces together. Basically, these two parts need to stay aligned with one another because otherwise this can just go up like this and it can come apart. So that's why you can see I added these things here. Those go into those slots and then this latch right here fits into that geometry and you can watch it happen right before your eyes. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't come apart. Doesn't come apart if I uh, pull on it this way. And um, this motor holder needs probably a little more improvement than the class mechanism. Basically, uh, it needs to be able to lift off up of off of the belt, just because uh, the belt needs to be placed on, um, and then the motor needs to be placed on top of it. You can kind of see there's some give in this. Let's get a belt printed and see if we can make it drive. All right, so here we've got our uh, inner part of the bearing model. And you can see you've got roller bearings. Here's the motor with the gear on it. And this part that I made that you saw to hold the motor in place. There's the latching mechanism. You can see here, and if you want to see it move, you can tell that I made this circular part to follow the axis of rotation from this pivot point right there. So it snaps into place really nicely, and if, in case you couldn't tell, this is kind of a leaf spring that will be compliant this way. It will bend outward like this when it's inserting. And then this part here inserts into this part, which uh, allows these two parts to be aligned so that this leaf spring can snap into place there. And there's a lip here. And I have a fillet on it. I might need to make this a tiny bit bigger just to make it a stronger latch, but uh, all in all, that mechanism works pretty well. So yeah, basically what I've done is I've taken the profile of these bearings and created this belt part here, all right? So I've made this belt now one and a half millimeters thick as, as opposed to half a millimeter thick like last time. Basically what I needed to do was make slots that the gear would fit in. I have uh, done a subtract where I've taken the gear and used it as a cutting tool for this part. This is how the gear intersects with the belt. So I've taken that face profile and used a repeating pattern on this part 
over here, which is at the actual printed belt part. And I've actually thickened this a little bit to two millimeters thick. And I've made this kind of um, clasp uh, mechanism where these slots are to be inserted. These slots get these parts inserted into them and it's supposed to um, uh, basically hold together pretty well. I doubt it's gonna be good. That's the first, my first design. Um, and then the belt wraps around this part. Should align pretty well with that part. And so, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and print this and see how that goes. All right, so here we have the belt that we just printed and it looks pretty good. As you can see, the features that the gear has to interact with came out pretty well. So that should work all right. And then this is the wraparound attachment mechanism that I made and it's not the best. Let's just see real quick. All right, so, I mean, it fits, but uh, as you can see, it's a little bit not, I guess not equal in its sort of bending radius, I guess. It's not a great matchup between these two sides. Um, you can see my finger through that, but uh, I mean, it should work all right. Let's try putting it on. try running a current through this. Alright, so that seems to work pretty alright. I'm only running at about two volts. And as you can see, it slipped a little bit there. It's not super well constrained along this direction. So that needs to be fixed somehow. But uh, let's try putting it on, I guess, and seeing how it works. Let's try running at a little higher voltage first. All right, 3.7 volts. Wow, check that out. Speedy. Oops, oops. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Yeah, let's try putting it on. So here's how that clasps together. <laughs> Again, there's a gap right there. So it's probably not gonna be the best. Again, it's not very well constrained in this direction. We'll see how this goes. I'll see if the gear can skip over there. I'll, obviously the clasp's gonna need some redesign there, that fastening mechanism. All right, let's um, attach some power. All right, so I've upped the voltage to eight and a half, and um, I've discovered that I need to hold this down. So, because otherwise what will happen is just this. Oop, see the motor comes loose. I need to hold it down here while applying voltage. So obviously this mechanism is gonna need some redesigning. But uh, let's see what happens. Hmm, it does something. Back. Yeah, so <laughs> kind of does what it's supposed to do. I think it's gonna have a lot of trouble getting over there, but let's go run it the other way <laughs> just to see. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, 
kind of made it. <laughs> but then, like I said, not really constrained in this direction, so it just comes off. And then this mechanism is pretty weak, so. All right, so all in all, we've made some progress. We've made some progress. This class mechanism needs a tiny bit of work, but uh, all in all, I think it works pretty well. And then we've got the belt. And the belt uh, seems to have really good features in terms of what the gear needs to interact with. It's kind of stiff. I guess I can make it a little more flexible, but of course this does need to be have some strength to it because things need to be mounted on it, i.e. cartridges or whatever that needs to actually go around the web shooter. That's really fun. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so bearings all work really well still, so that's a good development. Obviously, big thing is clasp system needs to be redesigned because that is not going to cut it. I'm thinking something where you can adjust the tension, and obviously we need to do something where it's constrained in this direction, because it keeps slipping out that way. So, yeah, and then this motor mechanism uh, right there, that probably needs to be redesigned as well. So, yeah, all in all, we're making progress, and that's what counts. So I think next time what I'm gonna focus on is gonna be uh, redesigning the belt. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. So if you guys are wondering what's gonna be coming next, um, check this out. This is a soda bottle preform. Um, this is what they use uh, to put into the blow molding process. This itself is injection molded, and then they put this in a sort of, I guess a die, they heat it up, they blow air in, and it inflates to fill the shape of the die. That's how your two liter soda bottles are made. Obviously you may have seen that this is what Blood Spider and Human Spider have used. Um, and I believe Spider Slayer on Instagram as well. They call them preform web shooters. They use these as the cartridges. I'm kind of looking at using these as well uh, for cartridges. I'm kind of late to the party, but I'm going to use these as arm cartridges instead. You might have seen the arm cartridges that I've used before, and they look bigger than these, but they actually have a smaller capacity, and I believe that's partly due to the wall size of the PVC pipe that I used. These obviously have been tested by many people. They can hold the pressure of R134A propellant. Human Spider also had an update video and we talked a little bit about this, uh, but he's using these stainless steel pieces, which are super cool, to attach to these cartridges. So that just kind of goes in there. There's a lot of possibilities there, you know? You could have something where this is just the body of a valve for this valve stem that I've been using. Yeah, basically, this is um, this is kind of a valve in and of itself. There's kind of a thing here. I think this is supposed to be when you load it into some kind of um, CO2 soda machine, you know. Um, this will compress and allow gas to flow in. Actually, it's a one-way valve. Um, so when pr positive pressure is put in this direction, this can open up and allow air to flow, but it won't allow any um, air to flow in the other direction, basically any back pressure. So yeah, you can see that right there. Basically what this consists of is, uh, let's see all the parts are right there. This is kind of the stem. You've got the spring, and obviously spring fits around that. And then you've got this part that basically holds that in place and lets uh, gas through there. Obviously these are not designed for liquid, but uh, I mean in theory a low viscosity liquid could flow through. Uh, all this stuff I'm not sure if I'm going to use. I've got this uh, 1 8 inch tap wrench, which if I apply that somehow through here, um, after drilling a hole, I'll be able to make an adapter that will fit onto my current web shooters. Now you guys can look forward to all that on a future episode of Research and Development. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I want to especially thank my patrons. I wouldn't have been able to do any of this stuff without them. Jeff Zachary Woodhurst, Green Ninja, The Arachnids, Christopher Jordan, Nicholas Sykes, Caleb Choice, and Spider Noah. Thank you guys so much. If you want to find the STL files for this episode, feel free to contribute on my Patreon. All patrons who contribute $5 a month or more get access to the super secret STL drive, which uh, is where I am storing these STL files. So thank you guys very much, and I will see you hopefully next week.